Thanks for coming out and joining us today to hear Josie talk about his new book and his voyage to make bread. Um, so I've known Josie for about three years. Um, he started his bread journey right around the time that um, I guess I met him, right? So he'll give you a bit more of the story, but I think um, in good Google fashion, we have an awesome video to really highlight the history of how Josie started to start this bread journey. So I'm just going to play that video, and then afterwards Josie will give us a bit of a talk. So. I've wrestled a lot with the question now that I'm so invested in this project. Do I want to be doing this? How long will I want to be doing this? Because I haven't been doing it for that long. And I've been doing it in a really different way that I'm about to be doing it. It's like, uh, like in college, you meet someone new, you just like, can't stop thinking about them, you know, and you're like staying up late and like you don't care. You're gonna be late for class tomorrow. You don't give a shit because you're gonna go hang out with them later. It's gonna be good. That's the way I feel about my girlfriend. And about bread. <laughs> my name is Josie Baker. I'm a bread baker. The first time that I baked a loaf of bread. It was not that long ago, it was two and a half years ago. It was so exciting to take the finished loaf of bread and bring it and give it to somebody. When I approached the owners of Mission Pie, I said, maybe I could rent space from you when you're not using your oven. It was written into the contract that we had. I need to have at least 10 loaves of bread available for walk-in customers. Some days I'd sell like 80 loaves, you know, in just like a few hours. For most people, the best loaf of bread that they've had is either a loaf that they made themselves or a loaf that they got from a neighbor. Somebody that made it like a matter of hours before and really like put part of themselves into it, you know? Josie has a few of these like simple things that just help. Like his heart is open. You can just tell he has a commitment to serving the people around him and his friends and the people he loves. He has an advantage in that way where he can be a novice and still have this remarkable product. Most people have what it takes to make something yummy. It's all the other stuff that separates out the people who make a few jars of jam, sell it to their neighbors, and the people who end up actually making a successful business out of it. Because it's a lot more than that. Jesus, I had no idea. One of the reasons that Josie's bread is so good is because he will never say how good it is. Because that's the way he sees it, it could always be better. We always knew that we wanted to open another location. I think that you probably hand your hands in like five different potential leases yes. around the city. And I basically lied to everyone to get them to, to jump on board the project. Yeah, so. <laughs> I can do it for 150,000, yeah. no problem. When we found the space, it was a bit bigger than we were looking for for a second cafe. And then we started to think about what else we could do in the space. I think I was falling asleep one night and I was like, ah, Baker. Let's, let's get Josie Baker in there. That wasn't on my radar, getting my own space. But as soon as he asked me, I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, like this is a, this golden opportunity. So let's go for it. I think right here, actually, about right here, is going to be our toast bar. They're installing this oven, this huge oven from Italy. It's crazy. This will be the mill room right here. This is the mill. I can't even believe it. Do you want to look inside? This, this little string and rod controls how quickly the grains fall in. He's one of those people that could learn how to do anything. So. For us, we're just really lucky that it's bread, and we're really lucky that, um, you know, he was naive enough at one point 
to <laughs> <laughs> take us up on this crazy mm -hmm. offer. I hadn't gotten very far in my conceiving of this whole thing. I didn't know where I was gonna get the money. I was like, okay, I'll need like $30,000, maybe $35,000 or something. I'll like, I'll ask around and I'll find that. And I did, I asked around and found it. And very quickly I realized that that was nowhere near enough. Oh geez, I need like, I need that much again. Oh, I need that much again. Six, eight months after that, and that number is, you know, times five. I like invested in his business a lot, like every dime of my savings basically. And I love Josie, but it was definitely like blind faith. There you go. This is a big commitment. Yeah, no problem. Was it back there? I, I, it was hiding back there, <laughs> hiding on you. Someone's got to make all of it happen. And if it's your project, you're going to be the one to make it all happen. I know what you mean, man. None of those people you hire are going to care about it as much as you do. It's, uh, it's hard. It's hardest to find things when they're right, right in I front of you. That this is our kiosk. This is our area for people to come in and sample the wares. Now, this is copyrighted, so I, so you know, don't try to copy this, anybody. <laughs> We're making toast. You know how to make toast. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Bye for you. Mm. We're, we're going to be doing this until until the place is built out, which will be you know a couple months from now. You're building now, yeah? Or? Yeah, yeah, a couple months. Really? Yeah. Really nice. We'll spot. open it up. taking a long time. It's taking a lot longer than I think any of us thought it was going to take. Planning on opening in June of 2012, and then that doesn't happen. Okay, we're going to plan on opening in August. That doesn't happen. Okay, we're going to plan on opening in November. I was in here the other night, and it was pouring rain. Water started just pouring out of this. It started just pouring out of that. Out of this hole in the ceiling, this hole in the ceiling. Uh, I go into my walk-in and there's like an inch of water on the ground. It's always just been me, you know? How can I figure out how to just make this work? By delivering the bread on my bike, by walking around and asking people if I could you know, rent space from them. Now I have a bakery. I've got a lot of loans to pay off. I'm invested in this project with these people, you know, and we're, we're now really relying on each other. That's scary because I've wondered how long am I going to want to do this? Because I haven't been doing it for that long. And I've been doing it in a really different way than I'm about to be doing it. We're out in Chico at Dave Miller's house at his bakery for one last trip out before I open up the bakery. <laughs> Bread is what, what brought us together and a lot of what we talk about. But as soon as you... He's been doing this for a really long time and I'm, I'm only like now engaging in certain questions that he engaged in a long time ago, you know? And so that's why, you know, I mean, he's the closest thing I have to a mentor. He, he, he has answers to a lot of the questions I have. And he's really happy to share them. That is the one problem with doing everything yourself. You don't have anyone to blame when it doesn't come out. <laughs> I totally. I've the, now I have the opposite issue with, with having Wendy's help. It's like we look at two loaves of bread and like one of them is, is perfect and one of them is like a little lopsided and I'm like, 
Wendy, Wendy made the one that looks perfect. <laughs> In San Francisco, I don't feel like there's really any room for me to like slow down. And I get out here and it's just like, everything's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a shot in the dark for everybody, man. It's, it's fine, I'd rather... It's better to have not enough. I'd rather for the first few days not have enough than have like, a, it, that's just, I mean, numbers. psychologically, it's that's damaging, you. Yeah. you know? We're, we're <laughs> trying to guesstimate daily numbers yeah. right now. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're gonna do it the first day, we're gonna be wrong. Yeah. We're All gonna right, adjust we're the gonna second day, we're gonna be wrong. I mean, if we sell out, sell out. We're yeah, we're, fucking, we're, we're not superheroes, all right? We're bakers. Yeah. I think that most people probably, regardless of what they do, if you're committed to anything, you're going to wonder whether or not you want to be. <laughs> awesome. It seems kind of boring to not be committed to something. Really good things take time. Like to get birds, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I see that. I feel that. Including like the marathon. <laughs> no sleeping. First dumpster ever. Yeah. Yeah. Where's yeah. it yeah. right? See, I knew that. That's why I was like. Yeah. Awesome. 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 trying to like become a croissant master or a cookie master or a whatever you know I just want to make bread I, I wish that I could give other people the the love and the focus that I've found through it Thank you. Thanks for coming very much. It's really exciting to, um, to do events like this. And it, it is always amazing to me when people that I don't already know come. So <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, 
Yeah, and like, like I said at the end, wow, there I am. Like I said at the end of, of that movie there, that was quite a trip down memory lane for me. I um, hadn't watched that in a little while. And um, you know, we opened the mill in February of last year, so it's been almost a year and a half. And that feels like very long ago. Um, but you know, I said at the end of, of the movie there that I wish that I could give people the love and the focus that I've found through bread. And um, you know, little did I know that, that that's what this book is, is really allowing me to do. And it's been really amazing to be hearing from, from people who, who have the book and are baking from it and are having a lot of success at home. And I get lots of emails that are, that are filled with, with exclamation points because people are so pumped up because they, you know, a common thing I hear is that <clears throat> folks have tried to bake a few loaves of bread at home um, or they just thought that they, they weren't a baker, you know, they didn't have what it took. And for whatever reason, they decided to, to get the book and give it a shot. And lo and behold, they are a baker, just like you all are bakers. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I mean, four years ago, literally four years ago, I, I hadn't baked bread at all. Um, and my friend George, um, was traveling through San Francisco, and he had uh, a little container with a little brown lump in it. And I said, George, what is that gross looking stuff? <laughs> he said, that's a sourdough starter. I was like, well, why do you have a sourdough starter? You can't bake good bread at home, right? He kind of laughed. He said, no, you can, man. Just, just try it. So he write, wrote down some instructions and left some sourdough with me. And <clears throat> a week later, I tried it and just was totally in love and um, haven't been able to stop ever since. And um, I'll go through, what I'll do is I'll, I'll maybe, I'll go through my slideshow and um, I'll probably jump around and jump through, speed, speed, speed it up a little bit quicker than usual. I'm not used to doing the slideshow after we've all seen the movie, so I'll try to keep from boring you. <laughs> This is my first blog entry in August of 2010. Holy moly, it's happening. Hi, friends. Holy moly, it's happening. I'm selling bread, and people like it. This is so totally rad, it's making my eyes pop out of my face. <laughs> Not really, but I'm pumped up. And so. <laughs> It really was, and this is just a few months ago. <laughs> Went from that first blog entry of baking at home to um, being, on, being on billboards, uh, bus stops around San Francisco, <laughs> which is unreal. Um, this is for uh, this great company here in San Francisco called Good Eggs. They're like an online farmer's market, and um, I sell a lot of my bread through them. And, uh, they were really influential and helpful to me early on in my business um, because actually, and some of you, I, may, I, may, I feel like you, and, and maybe some others of you, I actually, Google was super helpful, yeah, <laughs> super helpful to my business early on because I was doing, um, I started selling my bread through a bread subscription. So I'd say, hey, give me 20 bucks and I'll bake you a loaf per week for four weeks. So I started doing that, that just you know, word of mouth. And then I had an article written about it. And, and so strangers started doing it. And then I started doing it um, at some, some businesses around, around the city. And uh, I had a really good experience doing that here at Google, where some, some days I would drop off like 50 loaves of bread. Um, and that was, that was one, one of a handful of things that made me feel like, holy shit this might be for real. Um, 
And so this was in, this is Thanksgiving of 2010. I, um, I had that article written about me, and I was just baking at home, you know, kind of like selling the bread because I had to do something with it because I was baking too much of it to eat. <laughs> I had to give away. And um, I was selling it at my friend's shop in the Mission, Gravel and Gold, and someone came in there and saw the bread and tried it and liked it and saw my blog and said, hey, we want to write an article about you. And I was like, you, you want to write an article about me? My bread? OK, let's do it. And so they wrote an article. And all of a sudden, I got a bunch of emails from people I didn't know saying, hey, we read about your bread. We want some. And I was like, oh, OK. Wasn't really ready for that. But Kathy actually helped me uh, set up, uh, what was it, a Google form? Yeah. So they set up a Google form <laughs> so people could sign up for, for the bread. And you know I got their money through PayPal. And then on Thanksgiving Day, 60, I baked 60 loaves of bread in my home oven. Um, there it is right there. And it's funny looking at this picture now. I'm like, that bread totally sucks. But <laughs> you know, I think at the time, it was the best I could do. So um, <clears throat> this is <laughs> the type of things I do now is uh, <clears throat> my previous job, actually, was working at UC Berkeley at the Lawrence Hall Science on elementary and middle school science curriculum. And so I've got a love of children and education. And so we have groups of, of children come and visit us every once in a while. And we take them around the bakery and show them that our huge oven. And when you press a button, you know, it shoots steam out the front. It's very exciting. But so I'm baking at home. And I bake those 60 loaves on Thanksgiving morning. And it's very exciting for me. And I say, OK, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. And I quit my job, quit my day job. And I was, baking a, I was making a little bit of money on bread because I was baking it at home. You know, I didn't have any employees. I didn't have any expenses. You know, so if, if it costs you, you know, a buck in flour, uh, and then you make it into a loaf of bread, make, make a few bucks right there. It takes time, but like the moral of the story is we're, we're, we're making a little bit of money, but nowhere near enough money to actually live um, in San Francisco, especially. And so, so I started bartending at Amnesia. And what I would do there, when I didn't know that I was going to do this, but it just turned out to make sense, is I'd bake bread at home, or I'd bake it. Uh, I also met this, this really great and generous guy who owns a restaurant and a few restaurants in, uh, in the East Bay. And we're having a party, actually, Friday night at Penrose, if any of you are interested in coming out and partying. Um, Charlie Hallowell. And uh, anyway, I'd take the bread that I baked, either at home or at, at Pizzaiolo, and bring it into the bar and hide it under the bar. But I'd like cut up a few samples. And so I'd be like, you know, being a bartender. And they'd come up and they'd see the bread and they'd have a bite. And they'd be like, this is good. Where is this? Where is this from? I know where you can get a whole loaf of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got five bucks. <laughs> and pretty soon, pretty soon people would, would come into the bar. And you, you'd, I'd, know, I'd know as soon as they walked in. Because they'd, they'd walk in and they'd be like, and then they'd come up and they'd be like, is is this where I can get the bread? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and I did that for a little while, um, but did that till April of 2011. I, I wasn't cut out for being a bartender. Um, baking was more, more to my liking. And so I said, OK, I'm going to stop the bartending and really go for it. And then I started baking full time. So I was baking at Mission Pie, which is a, a pie bakery in the Mission. I just walked in there one day and asked them if they'd let me use their space, rent space from them in order to run my business. And they were, they were generous enough to say yes. And I was doing that and baking at Pizza Yo alone. So I was, I was baking three days a week and um, I was doing it all myself and delivering it. And uh, I was probably making around 250 loaves a week or so at that point. 
This is me at Mission Pi. Um, Mission Pi was so influential because it allowed me to, you know, I was baking at home and I was baking in this wood fired oven at Pizzaiolo. Um, neither of those ovens were really meant for bread baking. They weren't bread ovens. The oven at Mission Pi was a bread oven and it made a world of difference. You know, you could press a button and the chamber will fill up with steam and steam is really helpful uh, for bread baking, which you can do in your home oven just as good with just with a baking stone and a metal pot. And the steam that's created from the, the baking loaf of bread is actually perfect for creating a steam saturated environment, which will allow you to get the most oven spring and get a nice crispy crust and really beautiful coloration. So this is me at Burning Man. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, shooting a flamethrower. Pretty sweet. <laughs> um, that was one of the things that was very appealing to me about, about doing bread and turning it into um, my life was that I was, I was able to jump right into it and immediately be my own boss because I had my own ideas about how I wanted to do the whole thing. And the fact that I could just start putting them into practice right away um, was, was really amazing to me. And it definitely was, I don't think I would have made it if I got a job in, in a bakery or had to spend several years in, in a baking school. Um, but doing things like this was really important to me, apparently. Um, so this is, this is the room that Jeremy from Four Barrel brought me to when he said, hey, I, I got an idea in a space. I want to work on something with you. And he brings me here. And I'm like, oh, OK. Um, looks like we've got a lot of work to do <laughs> on this place, huh? And we did. Um, you know, as, as I painfully illustrated in, in the movie, you know, it took us about a year and a half from start to finish to build out the mill. But it's done now. These are just some trips from my travels with my wife, Kathy. This is Angkor Wat. And uh, doing some deep water soloing in an island in Thailand. Jumping into a river in Laos. Oh, oh that wasn't supposed to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I had that trip. We had that trip planned before I got involved in the mill, building out the mill. And um, so we stuck to it. But I came back and, um, you know, we had a lot of work to do. And uh, I did as much myself as I could. Um, this is me doing a little grinding on, on a a cart that we used for coffee service in the mill for a little while before the whole space was built out. Um, now the space is, is built out. Top seller is small, small beautiful children. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's, what's really amazing um, to me, one of the things that's really amazing is that we've got, we've got a really solid customer base of, of folks who who come there on a really regular basis. So it really feels like we're, we're members of the community. And um, that's really nourishing to me, to lots of other people. Um, about three weeks after we opened, we had to photograph the cookbook, which was not good timing. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, we'd already been pushing it back for weeks and weeks. So um, yeah, at that point, I was, I was hell-bent on baking every loaf of bread myself. And so I was still doing that at that point, um, which was silly, a silly idea to think that I could bake every loaf of bread myself. But I didn't know how to do anything else. So, um, so I'd bake in the morning, and then we'd take off in the afternoon. And um, we shot the whole thing over the course of a week. Aaron Kunkel was really, really fun to work with, really talented. Oh, so that was a terrible, terrible thing that happened to me. Uh, two months after we opened the mill, I was on a bike ride through Golden Gate Park. 
and uh, the fork on my bicycle broke, and I fell on my face, and um, it was very challenging, but it was actually a blessing in disguise because I was trying to do things like bake every single loaf of bread myself, which, which is a relic from you know, the way the business was when it was just me. But now it's, it wasn't just me. It was a whole team of people and a really talented team of people that as soon as I had to let go of the business, it, it flourished. You know? And I didn't let go completely, but I took 10 days away from the bakery because I was like in La La Land. You know? And I came back, and everything was great. You know? And people were, you know, in, in, on some level, they were grateful that they were able to um, take the reins, you know, and run with them. And it's, it's still so amazing to me. I'm filled with gratitude when I, when I go into that space and see everybody working so hard on, on this project. It really fills me with love. These are loafers, by the way. <laughs> and this is just a pretty loaf of bread. The bread is not always, baking bread is, the, it depends what your standards are, right? And what your end vision is for, for whatever you're doing. But you know, we've got a very particular thing that we're going for. And it's very hard to get there. There are many days where the bread is still wonderfully delicious and, and pretty. And I think 98% of people don't care or notice the difference from one day to another, but, but we obviously do. And it's, you almost, I'm almost never satisfied with how the bread comes out. Um, and that's what, one of the things that keeps it really interesting, you know, is that it's very, uh, it's a finicky beast. But this one came out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and we started doing uh, pizza on, on Monday nights at the mill. So every Monday night we do a different type of vegetarian pizza and it's been it's been really out of control. So feel free feel free to swing through if you want. There's a whole chapter in the book um, on pizza. And so without further ado, I think we should start talking about the book a little bit. Well I'll talk a little bit about this. Toast. <laughs> so I don't know if any of you were privy to the whole toast thing that happened, but we got we got a lot of flack for for uh, our toast and ruining San Francisco. Um, I'm glad that that's blown over. We, uh, you know, we make toast at the mill. We think it tastes good. Come, come try it if you like, but don't if you don't want to. And uh, this is the mill. So it's up on it's up on uh, Divisadero Street between Fulton and Grove. I'm there most of the time. Come say hey if you want. Um, so the book, Josie Baker Bread is a beginner's bread baking cookbook. And the first two chapters are a series of recipes that are meant to be followed sequentially. So you start at the beginning. You do recipe one, two, three, four. And each one builds on the previous recipe. And so the reason I did that was because I was hearing from, I had the same experience myself, but hearing from lots of people that, um, they're overwhelmed when you open up a bread baking cookbook. You're overwhelmed with the idea of baking bread. It's this mystical thing, it involves yeast. <laughs> Terrifying. But what I tried to do is start at the beginning and only give you the information that you really need. You know, not, not get all crazy about temperature and time and you need to shape the loaf this way, and there's a, a bulk ferment and then a proof, but you can retard the proof, and like all these things that when you're first starting out, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa I just want to make bread here, you know? And so that's, that's where we start out, with a really, really basic loaf with just bread flour, water, salt, yeast. You don't even need it at all. Um, and it's really flexible. You can, leave it, you can leave the dough in your fridge for like a week or less than a week, 
you know, the, as long as you want. Um, and then you shape it into a loaf and bake it up. And then the next recipe it introduces a few other things. We introduce whole wheat flour. We introduce the idea of mixing the dough in multiple stages. Um, and so on and so forth. And the second chapter is all about sourdough. I teach you how to make your own sourdough culture. And then the rest of the book um, goes into all sorts of areas. We, making bread with different grains, making pizza, um, pocket breads. Uh, the last chapter is sweets, like cookies and fruit crumbles and uh, cornbread, cream scones, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. But it's been great. I've been getting really good feedback. So happy to answer any questions anybody has about anything. Uh, when I bake bread at home, I feel like what's really helpful to me is to be like tasting your bread and being really picky about how the results are and like really just being ridiculously picky about it. Uh, how do you like assess how good your bread is? Like how do you like what are things are you looking for and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the first thing obviously that you can tell is you know what it looks like from the outside, which can be very deceiving. Um, you know, and that's a personal thing. That's your own aesthetic and what what you're going for. But one thing that we go for at the mill, and that I suggest you you go for in your home, is to go for a, a bold bake. And so that means baking your bread till the crust is really uh, the whole spectrum of colors, but everywhere from really dark brown to to really light, and you get that spectrum mostly in, in the ear that's created from the slash that you give it right before the bread goes in the oven. Um, but in order for your bread to not be dried out by baking it that much, you need to have kind of a lot of water in your bread dough. And so the, that helps the interior of your bread stay nice and moist while the outside can get nice and flavorful and crunchy. So then, so we've got the loaf. So we're trying to, I'm tr we go for a bold bake and, you know, some, what usually comes along with that is some crunch to your crust. It's our preference. If we're talking about sourdough, hearth loaves specifically. Um, then you cut into it and I like to have some irregularity to the crumb, the crumb being just the interior of the bread, crust and crumb, right? The crumb is the inside, the crust is the outside. Um, and that is where I can get very particular about what it looks like in there. Um, more than the pattern of the bubbles inside, uh, I want the inside to be supple, you know, soft. And to have it have the appearance, uh, to have it have a little bit of glossiness, which means that the starches are fully uh, gelatinized, gelated. I'm not sure which is correct, but um, just means that the the bread is fully baked. Um, having a good amount of oven spring on the bread, and so that means that when you put the loaf into the oven, it's going to undergo a period of rapid expansion, which is the mostly the gases that are already in the bubbles in there expanding. And so that expansion is called oven spring. And so if when you slash your loaf, if you do it well, and if you've done everything well, you'll have a nice amount of oven spring, which will lead to you know, something along these lines, which you can see, like this was closed up when we put it into the oven. And I ran a razor like that, just along this part. And so this was the cut I made, you know, lines up with here and here. And all of this is tearing. The dough ripped itself apart because it had so much vitality in it. So I like, I like some oven spring, but it's a personal question, you know? Everybody can decide for themselves. So when you started, you first baked your first loaf of bread, were you yeah. looking for a life change? Like, were you happy <laughs> in doing what you were doing? That's a good question. Um, you know, when I started my work at the Lawrence Hall of Science, that was like my dream job. And 
And I totally loved it for the first several years that I was there. And, and then I started to think about doing something else. And I didn't know what. And actually, I was really close to going back to school for psychology. Um, I, I was going to apply to CIIS here in the city. And I missed the deadline for applications. And when I realized that I was gonna, it was going to be a whole other year before I could go, um, I realized that that wasn't the right fit for me either. And so, yeah, I wanted to do something else, but I wasn't sure what until, until I started baking. And then it was, it was really not even like, oh, this can be my next job. It was just like, oh, man, I've got to be doing this all the time. And then figuring out how to make it into a business came after the fact. It was sweet. I lucked out. I, th I think. So it seems like bread has uh, recently gotten some fame about it, um, it which is great, because I love eating bread. I love making bread. Um, and it seems like every year or so, the New York Times will run this big article talking yeah. about Jim Leahy and No Need Bread, or Chad Robertson from Tartine. Yeah. Uh, this may be an unfair question, but what do you think your personal angle to bread is and how it differs from some of the other bread celebrities? No, that's a cool question. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is loafers. awesome, which I would do if it didn't mean throwing away three hours of work. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just starting to wonder that myself. What is, what is my angle to this whole thing? Um, and in a way, I feel like other people would actually be better suited to answer that than me, because um, because like I just said, it really was not, like I didn't have any business plan to the whole thing. You know, It was not like a calculated endeavor. Um, it was pretty, pretty improvisational, the whole thing. But what I'm, what I'm realizing, and this is like what I just said, is that other people, what I'm hearing from lots of people tell me is that what they value about my approach to the whole thing is that it's, it's casual and fun, and that it takes the, the, the terror out of bread baking, which for whatever reason, I think bread baking has a certain mystique around it right now, which is funny because you know back in the day, it was something that everybody did at home, and there was no there was no hullabaloo about it. You just baked, because that's the way you got bread. Um, and so what I found through the process of bread baking you know, as a hobby was I found a lot of peace in the act of making bread. And then I find a lot of joy in the connections that breaking bread can foster between people. And so the more people that can find those things through it, I think the better. Because it's really, uh, to me, it's a, it's a pretty magical thing to engage in. So maybe something along those lines? I don't know. <laughs> Great to have you back. Thanks, um, man. I was a uh, I was lucky enough to be a proud uh, and, and joyous eater of the lo the bicycle delivered loaves that were here. I we would you. buy many of them and then actually give them to friends and so forth. That we just awesome. enjoyed those so much. Um, so one of the things that was evident then and is still evident now is your sort of passion and sort of uh, the joy you take in what you're doing. Um, and I've. I, but you also say, like, you know, one in 50 set of loaves, like, OK, this is good bread. Otherwise, eh. and then, but you also, and then you also just now spoke to, you know, sort of the, the peace or perhaps even meditative quality to the act itself. And I'm sort of curious, like, OK, so that's a really interesting combination of, like, feelings yeah. about something. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, if I succeeded one in 50 times, I might be saying, hey, 
maybe I should be doing something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, admittedly, your tastes are now very particular because yeah. you're an expert, but you know, nonetheless. Um, so I'm curious if you could sort of tease that sort of, you know, what brings yeah. you to the, you know, the, the immense amount of work involved in, in what, you know, in what you've accomplished so yeah. far. I mean, that's very evident in all aspects of it. So I'm curious, like, wh you know, why did despair not drag you into the, yeah. into the floor? That's a great question. I'll, I'll blab a little bit. You just keep me on track, OK? <laughs> um, I think these days, actually, one of the things, I mean, it's always, it's always interesting and challenging. Right? And, now, and now, you know, making one loaf of bread when you're first starting out is new and different and interesting and challenging. And after you do that for a while, it starts to become easier. Right? That gets complicated when you start making two, four, you know, 300 a day. And so it's still really challenging. Like every day I have in the bakery, I'm like, holy crap, this is this is hard. This is hard to make this much and to have everything go really well. And then when the bread comes out, the moment of truth, you know, you see how good a job you did. And it, it is really hard for, for the bread to live up to this, this idea I have of it. And every once in a while, it does it. And that is like this, this carrot that keeps dangling in front of me and, and keeps me, you know, the fact that it's elusive is, is very intriguing and seductive, you know. <clears throat> but that's my experience of it. Now our customer's experience of it is that, I mean, basically the bread's the same every day, you know, and that's awesome. The fact that we have people coming back and buying the bread regularly is extremely flattering. And I'm really grateful that I can play that role. But so, you know, it's through, it's through two different lenses that I have those experiences. I have the, you know, really critical side from my maker perspective. And then I have the, the really satisfied part, which is, you know, from my relationship with, with my customers. Um, so both of those things mean I keep going. So at some point, you went from being you know, some guy who followed some recipes and was making some decent bread <laughs> that you kind of liked and you kind of liked doing it, to a point where you, know, you knew or you know sort of what the you know, 100 variables that you can alter to affect the taste and the texture and the size and the color and all that of your bread. Yeah. I'm really interested in how you got there. You know, uh -huh. how is it that you made that transition from sort of, you know, somebody who just follows recipes to a baker, yeah. right, who really kind of knows what you're doing? Yeah. Well, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, it, it, it is. It's a process, right? And so there, there was never, there, was, there wasn't any one moment where like it all clicked or anything. It's still clicking. Like I still, every time I'm in the bakery, I'm learning something new. Um, and being able to more delicately pull on all those strings as I understand what exactly they're connected to, you know? Um, but one thing that I did really early on, yeah. You may, be saying, you may be about to say this, but I was going to ask if there was a point at which you started doing things like experimenting, mm -hmm. saying, OK, let's, let's on purpose yeah. do things in you know, n different ways and see what it's like, knowing yeah. that you know, probably n minus one of them will be really bad, but you'll discover which is the one that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I started doing that pretty early on, yeah, and I was very, I was meticulous about it, and that you know is in part just my disposition, but also because I would, had just been working in science education for the last five years, and so I knew that that was the way I was going to get answers to my questions, and I had really specific questions, and so um, I think also having 
having the experience of not, not getting it all laid out for me by going to school or working under someone else, that kind of had to be my approach from the beginning. You know, I was, I was doing the investigation here, and I was getting to decide what the questions were. Um, so I, I went about it in a pretty scientific way. And um, you know, having my buddy just scribble out some instructions, and then really quickly noticing that everybody has a different way of doing it, right? And obviously, like, there's many different ways to make a great loaf of bread. Like, there's many different ways to do most things. And so, OK, well, why, why does this method work? And this method works, and they're so totally different, you know? And so I had, I had a lot of energy that I was ready to pour into something, and, and bread became it. And by making it my, my job very quickly, all of a sudden, I was just I was baking all the time. I mean, I was baking a lot because I was interested in it. But then, then I started selling it, and then people started asking me for it. And so then I was just really, you know, that really accelerated everything. And it was always a really rich learning experience because there wasn't anybody saying, "Hey, you need to make sure that water is 75 degrees." Well, why? You know. Well, what happens if I make it 80 degrees? You know. And by the way, I didn't even measure. The temperature of the water, which any of you have, have baked any bread before, you know that the temperature of the water will really affect how quickly your bread ferments. The temperature of your dough. Basically, a warmer dough ferments quicker than a cooler dough. Simple rule of thumb. But I didn't even take the temperature of the water for the first like six or eight months that I baked at Mission Pie. And it was fine. <laughs> so if you're nervous about taking the temperature, just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that kind of answer? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious about just that you mentioned the community aspect. And I think we're super fortunate to live in San Francisco, where we have access to wonderful talents like you. Okay. Um, just as far as like continuing this, where you have a community of people who have amazing talents when it comes to food, is there something that, like, that you're part of outside of now that you've got this establishment, you're a huge business, you're growing? Like, are there other things? Like, do you see sort of a connection or a larger community that's becoming bigger here in San Francisco than other cities where we can support? I mean, I love seeing this, and I love seeing it happen here in San Francisco, yeah. other than other cities. I'm just curious if whether or not there's meaning like a formal organization or just um, like a I'm, collective of of artisanal bakers and and others. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think. I'm not a member of any formal or, or organization um, you know, uh, that's catered specifically to that. Um, what I find part of the reason why I ask is because you know, it's fascinating as you look at how you established yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure it was very scary at times and challenging. And so like, who did you turn to? Gotcha. You know, it was people who are yeah. in similar ways just establishing themselves. And like, yeah. how do you guys totally. support each other? Yeah. So one of the things that was so helpful to me from the very beginning was that I was able to, again, I would never have used this term in the moment, but I was able to find mentors who were, who were people who were already working in the industry who had answers to all these questions I had. And it would be, you know, there are certain organizations that that have that type of framework set up, um, like uh, La Cocina in in the Mission. Um, but without that guidance, I mean, I would have been really lost, you know. And I think I I'm I was bold enough or stupid enough to just really like talk to anybody who would talk about it with me. And every once in a while, you, you find someone who you resonate with and who you can actually have a, a relationship with. And like you know, Charlie Hallowell and Jody and Jeremy from Four Barrel and the owners of Mission Pie you know, and Dave Miller out in Chico, like all those people were so helpful in helping me figure out what my value system was and how to navigate that whole thing. Um, so I don't have a great answer, though, for you as far as like what, 
maybe some maybe someone in the room knows about about some um, maybe you should start one maybe I should start one <laughs> I, I I think you have a great story so I, I just I like spread the word I appreciate that it's one of the things that I've been chewing on I'm trying I'm trying right now to not start any new projects but that's so, something <laughs> something along those lines is something I've considered so thank you um, hi, so I live near the mill in Western Edition, and every time I walk by, it's just so busy, so crowded. Do you have any plans of like other locations, or what, when you look to, your, to the future, what do you see, or what are your plans? Um, I don't want to open another location anytime soon, um, mostly because it was so much work to get it up and running, and now it's up and running, and. I want to be in that for a while. Um, and if I was to start something else, I would just be in the process of building again. So no, I think what we're going to focus on for a while, at least, is exploring different breads, um, exploring work with different grains, uh, building relationships with, with California farmers. Um, that stuff is really. That those are the those are like the goals of building the mill, and now that we have it, you know, we can we can get to work on those things. Um, is the idea of opening a, a restaurant where we serve toast and coffee in the morning and pizza beer at night? Is that exciting to me? Hell yeah! <laughs> Will I maybe do that at some point? Very possibly, but not yet. I'd like to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start work on another book, though, um, which uh, is going to be uh, a journey to my favorite bakers around the country and you know, exploring the role of the village baker today and translating their recipes uh, into recipes for the, for the home cook. Which is, it's just an excuse to get to go hang out with my favorite bakers. <laughs> so you described a really interesting and you know, somewhat unique and idiosyncratic path to how you got here. Uh, I'm wondering how that affects the way that you teach and mentor and relate to, to the people who work for you, mm -hmm. right? Because they're coming into this thing which now is kind of established, but you came into it you know, sort of from scratch and having yeah. to learn it all yourself. So I'm wondering if that affects the way that you interact with them and teach and mentor them. Yeah. We've had a, we've had a, a growing team of folks, you know, at the bakery. Now we're up to 10 people. And I, I really, that's a great size. And um, I can have a direct relationship with everybody that works for me. And for now, that's what I want, you know. I don't. I, don't, I, I actively am not looking to have the team grow at all. Um, but I like that because because of that direct relationship I get to have with everybody who works for me. What what I wanted to build at the mill was was a really like a tight knit little family, you know, a, a crew of people, and and you know. To a large extent, we've done it. You know, we spend a lot. We all spend a lot of our free time together. Um, we like and respect each other as as coworkers and as as people. Um, but it it is it's interesting um, because I haven't hired anybody as a baker who didn't have any experience. Um, a few of the folks had more experience working in bakeries than I did, which wasn't too hard because I didn't have much. Um, but we've also we've we've had people join the team who really didn't have much experience in baking, um, but they were really really interested and they were really dedicated to it, and they didn't already have all of these ideas about how we were going to go about things, right? And so we're able to start and build from the ground up. And sometimes that's a lot easier than 
having to unlearn things that you've learned from however long you've been doing it the way you've been doing it. You know, um, I, as much as possible, try to remain really open with with all of my employees, and I always say, um, I say the best idea wins. You know, which means like if it's somebody's first day and they come in and you know they don't know the way we're used to doing things and they ask a question or they suggest doing something radically different if you keep your mind open they might have a brilliant solution you know to a problem you didn't even know you had and so you know sometimes that happens and sometimes it's a stupid idea but <laughs> you know you got you got to keep your eyes open to it so Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it.